Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey guys, so in this video, I figure I'm gonna make a short video on how to create a bootable operating system on a USB thumb drive. Specifically in this video, we're gonna go through the step-by-step -step process of installing Tails, which is a Linux-based distribution on a USB drive. That will give you the ability to plug the USB drive into basically any machine that you could boot off a USB from to run this operating system. And then when you're done, you just pull the USB stick out and you carry on your day. So in essence, it will give you a mobile operating system. Okay, so to start, I'll put the links in the description where you could get the operating system from and where you could get the software to actually uh, mount the operating system to the thumb drive. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go into our system here, specifically to the location where we downloaded the uh, Tails um, operating system and our actual uh, software to mount the Tails operating system to a USB drive. What you'll do is you'll run the portable operating system, I mean the portable uh, application for the, uh, the configuration. And it may take a couple seconds to launch. And we're gonna choose flash from file. And then we're going to go to our location where we have our Tails operating system. I'm going to click Open. And I'm going to select our target. And that's our USB drive right there. We're going to select that. And then we're going to click on Flash. And what that's going to do is that's going to run write your operating system to your, um, to your thumb drive. And once it's done, we'll have to reboot the system and boot off the flash drive, the thumb drive, to finish our configuration. Stand by. Okay, so there you can see it. We finished. We have a successful target. Um, so we're going to reboot this thing and boot off this drive now. Hey guys, just a real quick before we continue on here. In some scenarios, when you run this application and you mount the image to the thumb drive, you may have a situation where it fails, and in the event that it fails, you're going to have to clean the drive before you could rerun it. And I just want to show you real quick how to do that. So if this application fails to write the image and you get a failure notification at the end, which does happen from time to time, you're going to want to right click on the start menu and choose disk management. And again, wherever the start menu is, whether you're on Windows 11, 10, whatever it is, just right click on it, choose disk management. Now. If you have classic shell or something else running, you have to exit that first. I'm sorry, but that's just the brakes. So once you're in disk management, you're going to see your disks. That's your C drive. It's likely where your operating system's installed. That's your E drive. It's a FAT32. It's 14 gigs. We know that that's the thumb drive on this particular build machine. Not only that, but it says removable. You're going to open up command prompt as admin. And what you're going to write in is disk part. Once you're in disk part, you're going to do list disk. And you're going to see disk 1 and disk 0. Now that number corresponds to directly to what you see here. So we know it's disk 1. So we're going to just choose select disk 1. It's going to say that disk 1 is now selected. So we're now selecting disk 1. And we're just going to type in simply just clean and hit enter. And you'll see it'll reformat this drive to nothing. So it'll wipe that everything that's on it. And that's how you get rid of that partition that gets stuck in the event that you want to write an image to the, to the actual thumb drive. And now at this point, you could go back into the application and you could reattempt to actually mount it. And that should fix that problem. All right, let's continue on and let's reboot the system into that ISO. Okay, guys. So we are booted into Tails. So right now, uh, the system is just going to load the operating system. Um, off the USB drive and uh, we'll, we'll get to the configuration point here in just a second. Okay, so we just loaded our USB drive. Um, we're still connected to that USB drive and this is where we start to go through our quick configuration to get into our operating system. So what you can make here is an option, right? So if you wanna use this operating system on this thumb drive, as basically a full-blown OS, 
you're going to add the persistent storage option, which will give you the ability to add, you know, like your, your documents or add additional browsers or install things on the actual operating system. And then when you reboot, you could just uncheck this so that way the operating system doesn't change anymore. And it just maintains the original configuration. Or you could leave it checked like that and then you could continue to use it like as if it was a full-blown OS just on a thumb drive. Just keep in mind that if you check that or uncheck that or change it, um, you know, from a security standpoint, if you're trying to do stuff nefarious, you, you don't want to allow additional things to be stored on your system. But if you're doing things and you just want to use it as a regular OS, then obviously checking that's fine. So finally, the last option in here is you could click the additional settings here. And if you do that, you get the ability to create an administrator password. Um, you could shut off, if you really wanted to, the MAC address um, anomalization. So basically what that does is it just changes your Mac address every time you use the application, makes it harder for anything to track you. Um, the offline mode, you could enable networking or disable networking. Right now, unsafe browsing is available, which means that basically you could use like things like Chrome or Firefox. Um, and then your network connection, uh, allowing obsolete connections, it gives you the ability to run um, outdated hardware. So if you have an old piece of junk that you want to run just this off of a thumb drive, it'll allow you to do that. If you change that to only supported hardware, then that obviously uh, will limit your ability to use the operating system on the internet. Okay, so let's continue on. Okay, so the next screen you should get here is when you want to configure your persistent storage. So in other words, you want to configure things that'll save. There's going to be things that are like defaults. Generally speaking, I would tell you not to save like as a default your wireless password on this thing. Um, as a default because, you know, it's linked to your house then, I, you know, obviously that's not what you want to do. Uh, if you wanted to save like, hey, I always stay at Marriott and I know Marriott uses the same stupid password on every single location, then add that in here. But I wouldn't add your home Wi-Fi in here. Again, you're on a USB drive and if you drop it somewhere, somebody can still pick it up. And even though it's encrypted, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of real smart guys out there that know how to do these decryptions because of the ransomware stuff that's going on. I, I don't know if I would trust that. So at any rate, let's uh, let's start this on. So we're going to just hit continue. So what you want to do now is you're going to want to enter your passphrase, which is a password you're going to put into this thing every time you want to access the actual storage. That's how it's going to encrypt the actual drive where it stores the data. So once you do that, just create the persistent storage and hit the next button there. Okay, so the next screen you're gonna get here is the configuration of your data. So if you wanna store like documents and things, that's where you would allow, allow to save personal documents. Um, if you wanna allow to save passwords, broadband configurations, that's where you would do this. You don't wanna save the Tor bridge because obviously you don't wanna save your uh, search results from Tor to your actual system. That's not a good idea. Um, then down here, we're gonna see the configuration to allow us to save either bookmarks or the Bitcoin wallet or Thunderbird if you want to do like email client on it, um, an SSH client, uh, again, additional software and then uh, random files. I'm not going to make any of these other additional changes, just the, the three that I have in here. And then I'm going to close this out. Okay, so at this point, guys, you're going to get prompted to configure your Tor connection. And I'll be honest, I don't use this application because the Cloudflare application at this point on the web, for the most part, blocks this ability to use Tor just because it's going to prompt you continuously as to whether or not you're a human every place you go. And at that point, it's not really offering any additional security outside of an annoyance where you got to constantly enter in details. Now, for the first setup of this, you have to choose it, you have to enable it, but after you reboot and you go back into the system, it's not required to use this Tor browser. Um, just something to keep in mind. Okay, so after we clicked and configured our Tor configuration, again, that I rarely would ever use, we're in the operating system at this point. Um, at the top here, we could click on activities and we get the options menu down here, which again, looks much like you would find in your configuration of your Ubuntu. Um, we can show applications, see things that are currently here. We can show utilities. We have settings. So it's really a lot like your Ubuntu configuration would be. Um, I mean, you could click on unsafe browser. I'm not really sure specifically what they claim is an unsafe browser. But 
at this point, you're really, I mean, the Tor configuration, Cloudflare is going to stop you most of the time anyway, so. There we go. We're connected to Google. So this absolutely works. And actually, all in all, it's really not that slow. So I would definitely tell you to check this out and uh, make yourself a thumb drive operating system. Hey, guys, just a real quick... Uh, reversion. So we're going to revert real quick back to the uh, configuration. So I did a reboot on this system. I just want to show you what it looks like from a reboot perspective. So once you do it, you'll see the persistent storage with a lock. And if you put your pass key in, you unlock the persistent storage, which is where you save stuff. And if you don't and you continue on, then you don't get access to anything that's in that persistent storage. So any of the configurations that are saved there are still saved there, but you just don't have access to them. So for the sake of this, we'll just put the password in real quick. And then we'll finish the boot process. You can see the rest of this real quick from a reboot perspective. Okay, so then once it's up, it's literally just up. You could do the connection to Tor. You could close the thing out if you wanted to without the connection. And then you have all your application, your configuration, and things right there. And then you're good. You're uh, ready to go.